All right, welcome to the Mind of a Theist episode seven. I think we're up to actually, and um, today I'm joined with Dan, and basically we'll just be going through those familiar questions that you're probably used to hearing by this point. Uh, so essentially, we'll just set the stage a little bit. Um, Dan, how long have you been a Christian? Uh, that's probably an interesting question for me. Mm -hmm. um, I am the, the son of a Baptist pastor, who is the son of a Baptist pastor, so I'd, I'd be a, a third generation to work in church. Yeah, yep. Um, so growing up, I like Christian households, so I was Christian by mm. culture. Yeah. But I think probably when I was about um, 12 or 14, I, I actually became a Christian for myself. That's cool. I, uh, same boat here. My dad's a pastor and so on and so forth. Yeah. So I get that feel. Um, so what would you define yourself as uh, denominationally? I'm definitely Baptist. Baptist? Not that um, I don't think it matters heaps to me. No, nah, um, no. Nah. But yeah, I go to a Baptist church. Fair enough. And uh, that's good. It's first first purest Baptist. We had uh, Dan on as a reformed Baptist, but now we get <laughs> as a... <laughs> As I said to him, we're going for a Pokemon flavor of one of each kind. Yeah. Just hoping for the best. That's right. Um, so the other thing is, uh, first we'll just get you to define some terms. So okay. what is the scientific method to you? The scientific method? Mm. Um, something like um, it needs to be observable and repeatable. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's sufficient. Um, what how would you define an atheist or and a christian basically uh i'd say a christian is someone who who has accepted jesus in their heart as lord and savior mm -hmm. um though i don't think they need to have any kind of perfect theology um and an atheist i think it depends a little bit on the atheist but generally mm. someone who believes that there isn't a god no that's that's perfect usually we have a bit of confusion with atheist versus misotheist and misotheist is anger and hatred at the gods but atheist how can you be angry at something that doesn't exist yeah, yeah <laughs> sure <laughs> um, you know um i may not really like the character joffrey from game of thrones but i don't actually hate him um so define god um how would you define god to somebody who comes from a completely secular view with no Let's say in their culture they had no spiritual beliefs or religion and they've come up to you, heard you talking about God and are wondering who is this guy anyway, um, to quote Douglas Adams. Yeah, I'd say he's, um, first of all, he's the one who created us. Mm -hmm. um, but more than that, he's the one who wants the best for us and mm. so has set about, um, set about helping us find life to the full. Okay. Um, so do you think this aligns with Yahweh or the, the book or uh, the God of the, the Jews? Um, do you think this actually aligns with their representation? Uh, we could go Old or New Testament. Does it align with their representation? Uh, yes and yes and no. I think mm. um, Yahweh, Yahweh is Yahweh. Yahweh and Jesus are the same God. Yep, yep. Um, so the old testament scriptures or which are the same as the jewish scriptures mm. is of course still god um, okay. but i think they're just missing a whole heap mm -hmm. missing the fulfillment of it all so um on that why why would god uh want blood sacrifices um so for instance if uh we determine that god exists outside of the tangible or known universe uh, why ask for tangible things uh, to show love and adoration for something that isn't within the naturalistic universe? Yeah, oh, that's a big question. It is. I think, <laughs> um, I think you've got to start with the fact that God doesn't need it mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. by very nature being God. Like he doesn't, he doesn't need, like it's not like by sacrificing animals that keeps him alive. Like it's not like he feeds off it or it, it um, actually does anything for him. Mm -hmm. um, but so then looking at the purpose of it i think you've got a, a whole range and like if you're looking at old testament sacrifice they have different kinds of sacrifices yeah um 
but I think generally one of the biggest um, is is to be symbolic acts that teach us mm -hmm. or that taught the <clears throat> taught Israel at the time mm. um, and um, the biggest way like there's depending if you're looking at thank offerings or mm. um, celebration offerings like, there's a whole heap of different ones but the I guess the main most important one that is probably what you think of most would be the um, sacrifice of atonement. Yeah, yeah. Or sacrifice for sins. Mm. Um, I don't think that it, it did anything for our sins or for the Israelite sins. Mm. Um, but I think it showed them just how serious um, their brokenness was. Mm, mm. Um, it showed them how bad and how corrupted um, the world had become, and their need for um, need for God's help, their need for His grace. Um, and so it's a symbolic act where. Um, where out, where Israel was able to transfer their sins onto the sin uh, onto a, onto an animal, which yep. was able to die in their place and um, foreshadow what Jesus did for us. Mm. So I'll, I'll I'll use a I myself am not a member. I'm actually strictly opposed to Peter, but um, we'll we'll use this. Do you feel that that's fair to an animal's life to be sort of used in that manner by a human? Is it fair? Mm. I'd say um, yes and no, mm -hmm. because I, I think that um, God being God, he um, has the right to do anything, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but by his nature, he um, He can't do wrong. Okay. Um, so I think that the, the Bible actually teaches us that we shouldn't, um, a lot of the laws that God gives Israel is around um, protecting animals and caring for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but death i think it's almost like god choosing to um to end their life earlier mm. i think it's not um it's not for him trying to hurt them mm. um but to teach us so um one of the one of the questions i received uh because a lot of people sort of use this uh almost verbatim is uh god is just whenever referring to anything of uh sort of a not moralistic decay, but something questionable, uh, morality-wise, uh, that God would do. Uh, when you say God is just, do you mean that a creator has the right to destroy their creation at any time? Or do you mean that there is... Uh, just define that term. What What is yeah. this just? Yeah, I, I think um, to understand how that works for us now, you need to understand what we are right now. Mm. Um, and so... Um, looking back at Adam and Eve, um, there's different views as to how literal that all that is. Of course. Um, I probably take um, a stance that says the, the text isn't in, isn't trying um, mm. to speak into what actually happened, but trying to mm. teach us. Um, and it's teaching us the way in which um, we're in a broken world. And I think no, I, I think you've got to be crazy to um, try and deny that wherever you look. Um, yeah. No matter how good your intentions are, you will do things in your life that hurt other people. Yeah, of course. Um, and we can see, like, just the way um, they talk about how creation has been frustrated. Like, it's just, it's not the way it should be. And um, so there's suffering, there's natural disasters. Mm. Um, then there's more direct people doing things that they probably shouldn't be doing. Yeah. Um, and so in that sense, I think because, um, because we're a, a broken creation, um, we deserve punishment for that. Okay. I think God is just in the sense that we understand it, that um, he gives us what we deserve. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's through grace that he doesn't destroy us all. So the question we shouldn't ask, oh, why, why did God, why would God kill that person? Yes. But why would God not kill us all? Okay. So with, with that, that actually flows into a, a sort of popular question that's been going uh, throughout these interviews is the problem of evil but by extension um, the the issue with the problem of evil most people misrepresent it to think that it just means that there's evil in the world thus God does not exist it, it's not that it's that if God who is omnipotent which means that is aware of everything that will happen um, why create evil in the first place if, if you are a benevolent God the God of love, as, as so many claim, um, 
the idea of creating evil in the first place and creating a fallen world mm. is sort of contradictory to that nature. So why would God create that in the first place, knowing full well that it would be fallen? Yeah, yeah. I, I think um, you yeah, like you'd the way I answer this question would be different to someone who holds a stronger Calvinist point of view. Sure, sure. If you know what that means. Um, but I think to like it, it comes down to a little bit of your understanding of God's sovereignty. Like if he's, he's in control of everything, and mm -hmm. I would 100% agree with that. Yep. But I don't think he causes everything. I think um, there are things which he tolerates or he, he allows mm. as opposed to things which he chooses to do. Okay. Um, and so I think God only ever created a good world. Okay. Uh, uh, an unbroken world. Mm. Um, but through... Uh, through humans, through us, um, we chose to move away from that okay. and broke it. Yep. Um, and so, I think that that while we broke the world, um, mm. God, that wasn't something that God caused or He chose to do, but something that He allowed. And so, the, it just raises the question: Then, why did He allow it? Yeah, of course. Epicurus um, was very like, you know, very fond of that. Question. Yeah, yeah, and. Um, and I think in answering it, you've got to you've got to go to um, almost looking at what a computer is mm. and why he made us in the first place. And the Bible talks about the relationship God wants to have with us, and sure. that's seen throughout the whole Bible that God wants to have a, a real and true relationship with mm. us. Mm. Um, and and it's impossible to have a relationship with something that you have con total control over. Mm -hmm. like you can't have a relationship with your computer because all the computer can do is respond to what you tell it to do. I think they're working on that in Japan, but um, yeah, I'm inclined yeah, to agree. Yeah, so <laughs> maybe in the future things will be a little bit in different. In the future, <laughs> one can dream. Or even now, like it's starting to change, but um, yeah, you like a, a piece of wood you can't have a relationship with because mm. it can't do anything, it can't respond, it can't create, it can't interact with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so if God was to, um, to have stopped us to disallow us, then I, I don't think we're in real relationship with him. We're just robots under his control. Mm. So with with that being said, um, the I'll tell you what, because there's sort of three parts to the, not rebuttal to that, but a response to that. Um, the first part is Epicurus's quote, um, is God willing to prevent evil but not able? Then he is not omnipotent. Is he able but not willing? Then he's malevolent. Is he both will, uh, able and willing? Then whence cometh evil? Is he neither able nor willing than why call him God? So this is also used by a lot of deists to essentially say, you know, a, a lot of, for the free will argument, it's God allows certain things. Yeah. But the problem is, why allow them? I mean, we do have that choice, but wouldn't that mean that he has a malevolent nature to allow things like... I, I hate I hate doing this. I've almost I, I wish there was a fallacy about it, but we go straight to the Holocaust whenever we're talking about anything. So, why allow the Holocaust? Why allow um, child sex slavery? Why allow um, all of that? Simply to prove a point, um, especially if he already knows what's going to happen. Mm. Uh, because is that free will? If you if somebody kills another being. Was that the choice of that being to be killed? Uh, was that the choice of that being to be raped or genocided, etc., etc.? So in a way, that's that's sort of a. We seem to stop one another's free will, and um, Epicurus is is obviously a big fan of that, and the mm. Epicureans especially. So, what would your sort of response to the Epicureans of the world be? Yeah, I'm. I'm going to respond to it in two ways, actually. Sure, that's um, fine. One which doesn't answer the question, but I think is the most helpful thing. That's to why we're at about. theology college, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, and one I'll try and then address it a little bit more directly. Sure. Um, but um, I'll, I'll use an illustration first to explain the first point. Um, I I have never studied how a how a jet plane works. Okay. I have no idea. Um, how the engines work, how it can get enough force to get up to the air, like why sure. why the shape of the wings allows it to get sucked up. Mm, mm. Um, so I don't know how it works, but I see it fly all the time. Right? Okay, I've, yeah. I've been on a plane. Observable weather. It's evidence. observable, right? So I think that in, in life, if someone was to come up to me and ask, is it possible? Mm. Um, is it possible to fly? Then I'd say, well, of course it is. 
Yes. And the reason I'd say of course it is, is because I, I base my decisions not on the things that I don't understand, but on the things I do understand. Okay, wonderful. Right? And so while I might not understand why the plane is able to fly, I know it can. Yes. I've seen it. Mm. Yeah. It's observable, yes. Um, and and uh, I think a lot of atheists would actually inclined to agree with you. I mean, if we can observe something and we have a pattern of that observance, then we can relay that that's our reality or that's a confirmed reality. Um, yeah. That's that's essentially within a, without getting too metaphysical, um, that's sort of how reality functions. If yeah. I call this a drink, you call that a drink. We have more and more people agree, no, that is a can of Red Bull I'm drinking and splashed in my eye not too long ago and that really hurt. But um, we can assert that that is reality for that thing. Yeah. Um, so I, I would say atheists actually agree with you in that regard. Yeah. So, so yeah. I'm hoping so, and that, so with that in mind though, I then ask, um, what are the things that we know about God and about Jesus? Mm. Um, and through um, what the Bible says, my own experience and what I've seen in other people and a whole bunch of stuff, um, mm. uh, a couple key things that I know are true of God mm -hmm. um, is firstly that um, He loves us. Mm. Um, so situations even, um, there's a passage in the Bible where um, a friend of Jesus dies and he cries. Yeah, yeah, that's um, a very powerful And I think that's thing. incredibly powerful to be able to see the way in which um, the, the sin of the world affects God as well. It's not something that he wants. Mm, mm. It's a, a real clear statement that he, he wants to prevent it, in fact. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's one thing we know. We know he loves us. We know um, he knows what's happening. A lot of, um, he, like, he knows what he's doing. A, yeah. lot, of, a lot of what the Bible says. Um, my own experience of, of how he works mm. um, shows me that um, and similar similar with his his power and his authority and and so on yeah and so um, when faced with that question of why has God allowed the Holocaust mm. or other evil things to happen I think the first place I need to go to was um, is acknowledge well there's things about God I don't understand and I, I, I fully accept that as God I, I'm never going to understand everything about him okay but the things that I do know is that he loves me and that he knows what he's doing and he's in control um, okay. and I think that that is that's the position I need to come from when facing this question yeah that's fine um, so that's kind of my my first answer which in some ways doesn't answer the question mm -hmm. uh, then my second answer um, would be um, I'll go with another illustration mm. um, if if uh, a man was to say oh look I know how to fly I can fly like I can hover just of my own self without any kind of Iron Man jetpack or anything yeah, yeah. I know how to fly right and everyone's like no you can't like gravity's gonna pull you back down to the ground he says no I can yeah right he says gravity doesn't actually exist yeah he gets up on the top of the building and he jumps off the building mm. Two things are going to happen. Firstly, he's going to fall, mm. and he's going to get hurt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he's, he's firstly going to get hurt, and secondly, by being in it, like in the process, he's going to prove the very fact that gravity does exist. Mm, mm. Um, and so, I think God has made us in a certain way mm. um, to work a certain way. Mm. Um, and when we choose not to acknowledge that, and we choose to go another way, two things happen. Firstly, um, there's pain that results. Mm. Um, and and we prove the very fact that God has made us to work a certain way, and I think the Holocaust does both those things. Okay, um, hurts people, and proves that it's not um, not the way we've been designed to work. Mm, mm. Um, and then why why he actually let it happen? Yeah, I, I think you've gone back to what I was saying before. I, I think he. Um, if he was ever to have a relationship with us, mm. that's real. If we're ever to learn um, what it means to be with him, mm. um, he he can't um, like it, it wouldn't work if he just stopped us from doing anything wrong. Mm. Okay. No, that's that's a that's a decent answer for the Epicureans of the world. Um, so I'll, I'll actually I'll, I'll move on to another question because I, I think that's sufficient. Um, Given the thousands of other religions, why is your faith the correct one? Uh, why is it the correct one, or why do I believe it's the correct one? Um, I think both could be seen as the same, uh, same sort of answer. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, so if, if someone asked me why I believe in Christianity and not in, um, not in any other religion, um, I'd have a, a few different reasons. Mm. 
Um, one of the biggest is that I think um, from all historical evidence, hmm. um, it's actually true. Okay. Whereas uh, I, I haven't actually studied the Quran myself, but I've talked to one of my mate, um, one of my mates did a PhD on it, mm. and he talked about the way in which um, the Quran doesn't actually stand up historically. Yes, for it's very for its true. claims, um, the Bible, on the other hand, does. Mm. Um, and so, like within the Bible, it's it's not one book. It's just this compilation that people have put together. They put they got all these different texts from the time, all these texts that um, supported what actually happened and said, well, we've got all these texts, let's put them in one book. Yeah, That's yeah. the Bible. Um, so firstly, yeah, I think it's true, mm, mm. historically. Mm. Um, but then there's a whole other bunch of reasons. Like, I, I think the fact that um, that I'm, I'm born in a Christian household isn't something that I can... Um, that. Well, you didn't choose that, yeah. yeah, yeah. But there, um, so many of the people in my life, my family, my friends, people that I respect and people that I trust, mm. um, have also looked into into this faith, into Christianity, mm. and they've all um, found it to be true. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's almost like um, if say you say you went um, to um, Papua New Guinea. Yes, yes. I um, mean, you went to a village and there was a forest next to the village and someone in the village walked up to you and said, look, you shouldn't go into that forest, there's demons. Mm -hmm. You'd probably say, look, you might not say this to them, but you'd think, well, there's not really demons, there's nothing in the forest, I can go in there if I want. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then if a, a second person came up to you and said, look, don't go into that forest, there's demons, they kill people. Mm -hmm. You might still be a little bit skeptical, mm -hmm. but you might start thinking, sounds like a little bit of a scary place yeah yeah but then if you have a whole town come up to you and say look don't go in that forest or you will die mm. you still might not believe that there is demons yeah yeah but you're probably not going to go into the forest mm. um and that that's even more so with people that you trust the people that you trust and respect would have come up to you and say look you really shouldn't go into that forest yeah yeah um you're even more likely to believe so i think the um, the witness of my friends and family, uh, as well as the hundreds and thousands of scholars over the past mm. thousands of years, um, gives me a lot of confidence um, that it's um, that it, it, it is truthful. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I also find that um, Christianity is actually relevant. Mm. It's not just something that happened. It's not. Um, it's not just. Uh, it, historical fact mm, mm. Um, but my life has been changed by it okay um, the the things I learn every single week about about God and his love for me and the way that we're made to work mm. um, it it, um, it brings me closer and closer um, to, to life to the full which Jesus says is what he what he came for he came to give us life to the full mm. which I just think is crazy yeah no that's that's a good answer um, so essentially, I'll with the, the historical accuracy and all that, I'll, I'll throw this question in. Yeah. So um, one of my favorite books as a kid was the, the Tale of Gilgamesh. Um, so in the Tale of Gilgamesh, um, it's from the Mesopotamic era, one of my favorite eras, even though we have barely anything on it. Um, it just seems cool. Uh, and they had fantastic beards. They were all braided and looked fantastic. That's what you want. Yeah. I know it was it was a little <laughs> bit like uh, Rob French's beard. Like it was this glorious, you know. Um, but anyway, back on point, um, in, in uh, a Babylonian verse, as it's sometimes referred, we have um, things like Zia Sudra, uh, who is a man that Gilgamesh meets on his journeys, who essentially had the exact same backstory as Noah, um, to the point where, I mean, the only real differences are he had an extra bird, which was a raven, and it rained for seven days instead of 40 days and 40 nights. But 40 yeah. days and 40 nights is also seen as a colloquialism, which means quite a long time. Yeah. Um, so with that being said, um, we also have others. So for instance, uh, Enkidu uh, is a man who was created from dust, who lived in a garden, who uh, all this sort of thing fell from the garden when a beautiful woman, I actually think it was an incarnation of Ishtar. But anyway, she came forward and offered him fruit and you know all this. Uh, we also have things like uh, Sargon of Akkad, one of my favorite historical figures. Uh, when they were destroying all these males in the village, he was put in a reed basket and delivered downstream and, and, and whatnot. Um, so there's a lot, of, a lot of things from the Old Testament that seem to be mirrors of Mesopotamic legends. 
um, how would you sort of respond? Is that a stumbling block or would you say that's more of an affirmation? Um, yeah, well, so in, in a lot of this stuff, I, I was listening to um, the, the video with Jasmine in it. Yes, yes. Um, and I think I, I disagree quite strongly with a lot of what Jasmine, Jasmine says. Um, <laughs> not that I think... That We're going to start she's... a debate, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, which I, I think in some ways is kind of question. Like, I'm not going to claim Jasmine's not a Christian because she believes something different yeah, to me. Yeah, of course, right? of course. Um, fully respect that. Um, and that's um, definitely one way you can go with the texts. Mm. Um but yeah, so I, um, I, I think to start that conversation, you need to look at, um, look at the fact that the claim, when, when we say um, the Bible is true, mm. what, what do we mean by true? Yes, that's um, a very good point. And so we talk about, uh, if you look in a, say today, you look at a, a newspaper, mm -hmm. I mean, in, in the newspaper is an article about um, some new kind of disease or something, right? Yeah, so sure. it's true. It, it's true in the sense that it's telling facts. Mm, mm. Um, whereas if you watch a kids show, which has um, the moral that you shouldn't kill anyone, yeah, I'd say that that's still a, a true mm. thing, but not true in the sense that those little teddy bears actually existed. Yes, yes. But that what it's trying to say, its claims are true. Mm. Um, so I think you need to look into the genre of the text quite mm. intently because you read it quite differently like imagine if you um go and, and read a news article about how um ISIS, about isis and you think that's a joke because yes, you think yeah. it's a comedy or something but then you go and read the power rangers and think that was factual like <laughs> you're just going to be all over the place there are some people understand. just having mental breakdowns over the potty patrol there yeah uh, yeah <laughs> they can't for sure it. right um, so I think you've, you've, the first thing you've got to do is look to the text and what is the text actually claiming? What's its genre? Yeah. Um, and so if you're talking um, talking specifically about Noah, um, and it, it's quite similar, I think, for a lot of the um, Genesis, yeah, um, yeah. The, the creation stories, where um, I think it's Enuma Elish is, some, is one of the yes. um, contemporary creation stories, which is quite similar. Very to, similar, um, yes. To Genesis. Um, with the flood, mm. I think that it, it's a text. Not that, not not that it, it may or may not be mm. um, an actual fact. There may or may not have been an actual flood. Mm, mm. Um, but the, the the what the text is trying to claim is not. Hey, look, there was this actual flood, and it went for forty days, it went for forty nights. Yeah, all this yeah. Stuff. Um, I think it's it's trying to teach a truth mm. about our world. Um, and. I think it, it's trying to teach us of, of the way that um, the way that our world was so broken that we deserve judgment. Mm, mm. No, that's that's a, that's actually a really good response. I mean, um, obviously, one of the the great C.S. Lewis's quotes is, you know, uh, Jesus is either what is it, Lord, Lord, lunatic, or I can't remember the third, Lord, lunatic, or oh, an idiot. Yeah, that's it, or a fool. Um, and, and there's actually a new movement right now where it goes, Lord, lunatic, fool, or legend. And um, legend being, for instance, we have Heracles or Mithras, right? Yeah. And um, these sort of things move from a historic basis into a legendary account of things. So, for mm. instance, Mithras uh, rose from the dead. Um, but if we look at the original texts, uh, Mithras didn't rise from the dead. He suffered a grievous wound from a bull. Um, which, when you put it in retrospect, isn't... I mean, you get gored by a bull. It's not really that, <laughs> that impressive. Yeah. Um, but no, that, that's uh, perfectly sufficient. Um, so I'll get into some, some hypotheticals now, yep. which are always fun. So if Jesus was alive today, uh, would you support it for him to be crucified? <laughs> um, has he still been crucified? Like, was... Uh, we'll say no. So let's say, let's say instead of appearing in the Old Testament, yeah. Jesus appears today as, I don't know, um, Mark the Carpenter, or Josh the Carpenter, or rather, that'd probably be a more accurate yeah. uh, translation. Um, and he says, guys, I'm the son of God. Um, you know, we do the whole, whole spiel, basically. And we get to a point where he's going to be executed by the government because he's causing an uprising against... Uh, even say the Australian government, um, would you still support him? Would I support him? Mm. Um, in the sense that, like, I believe him? Yeah, yeah. Well, let's say you believe him and 
Uh, would you believe him, but would you support him if your life was in danger as well? So let's make it a two-part question. Um, yeah, well, I'd hope I'd believe him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just in the same way that um, Peter and the disciples at the time, mm. um, I, like they were definitely very confused, very scared, but I think they still believed mm. in Jesus, um, which is attested to in the way they, they respond later. Yeah. Um, would I put my life on the line? Mm. I, again, I, I'd really hope so. Mm. I have, <laughs> but knowing myself, who knows if I'd have the balls to do it. Exactly, yeah. I mean, I don't think any of the apostles really, really stepped up in that game until after the fact. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, for instance, I... I'll tell you what, I, I use I use the Yolo Turban Rebellion with Mountain Man, but, um, uh, I mean, Dan, ah, uh, here we go, I've, I've used his nickname, but, um, <laughs> but, um, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll use ISIS, um, in this regard. So ISIS truly believe in what they're doing. Um, they believe that Muhammad was the prophet, they believe that God or Allah, um, the, the God of the moon, you know, he exists outside of time and cannot be confined to the linear aspect of time etc 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 i i just finished the quran and the hajid and stuff it was great um Sweet. but um isis truly believes that um so could that be said that since they truly believe what they're doing to the point where they're willing to suicide bomb to the point where they're willing to die for their cause do you think that's a sufficient uh equivalency uh having a religious basis on what you do with your life and, and whatnot yeah so almost could they be accepted into heaven well in a way um could you say that you understand their reasoning because they they truly believe what they're doing yeah, yeah. and so the apostles so true to saw, saw rabbi yeshua as the messiah yeah but many other people have died for their causes it's not just the apostles isis is one Yellow Turban Rebellion had an entire part of China rise up and rebel. Um, Sargon of Akkad, uh, even Caesar, is, uh, the son of Mars, for instance, mm. um, had people die for him. And it, it's that sort of thing of, do you think that that... I'm not, I'm not saying it's proof, uh, but do you think that that's an equivalency to Christians who say, I'm going to give my life for God because I know it's true? Um, these other people also view their texts as true and will also provide reasons. I, I saw Muhammad come to me, I saw this and, and yeah, whatnot. Yeah. Um, how do you sort of rectify that? How do you answer that? Um, I think there's uh, a few different things. I, there's probably two main ones that stand out to me mm. now that you say that. Yeah. Um, I think the first is uh, there, there's a degree to which, um, because God made us, yes. I think we're all born uh, with a certain level of, um, of understanding of morality. Yes, of course. Um, and I, I think you're pretty hard pressed to disagree with that. Mm. So uh, there's, there's pretty much no culture that condones killing. No, no. Um, when you're getting down to like smaller stuff, it becomes a little bit less clear cut. Like what what's appropriate um, when to do when someone mm. um, attacks you, for mm, example. Mm. Like, are you allowed to defend yourself? Are you allowed to kill them back? Like, yeah. if someone swears at you, can you can you beat them up? Yeah. Um, on smaller scale, but on on this bigger stuff, like like um, rape. Well, it might be legal. Mm. Um, in some places, I don't think anyone would ever claim that it it's a it, it's a good thing yeah yeah um um well with that being said there, there's actually with the case of morality um i'll use sort of an evolutionary standpoint for this but usually morality can also be seen as a basis of what we agree is better for the betterment of society this is only one yeah case. yeah yeah um so for instance i i particularly don't want to wake up every day wondering if i'll be killed uh so in that regard i feel that quite a lot of other people would agree with that um, lest they, they opt to do it themselves. So, morality in a way could be seen as society functioning from an evolutionary standpoint yeah. to ensure the survival of that society and the betterment of humans. So, for instance, a humanist would argue that uh, the Bible doesn't actually condone rape. Um, it, it 
actually omits that from even the Ten Commandments. Uh, same with slavery. Uh, we, we've seen people go into in Levitican law and things and say, well, really it's a slavery to our hearts and etc. etc. And then we have how to buy and purchase a slave and how to trick a Jew into being a slave. Um, so with that being said, um, when we look at morality, it can also be seen as a personal bias to the betterment of our lives. Um, so in a way, do you think that that's still God-inspired or do you think that it's, it's merely a selfish I, I, I just gene? think it's wrong. I don't think that's true. I don't think you can claim morality is the most, like, th those ideas come from almost like Darwin's ideas of survival of the fittest. Right, uh, like if yes, yes, yep. yeah. If um, if where like if I'm to survive, I I'll um help give you food because then later you'll give me. Food. Yeah, yeah, precisely. Right? That's that's it. Um, but there's too many ways in which we can see morality, and it's only detrimental to us. Mm. Right. So mm. that that theory only works if if what you're doing helps you to survive. Yes, precisely. But there are things that everyone worldwide would say are good, which will do nothing but make it harder for you to survive. Okay. Can right? you give some examples? So uh, uh, something like um, us donating money to Nepal. Yes. Yeah, right? Okay. There, there is no example. way in which anyone in my lifetime from Nepal is going to help me or even know that I donated to them. Really um, mm. But... So like my, my life, I'm a, I'm a student, I've got no money. Mm. My life is harder. I, I'm almost le I'm less likely to be able to survive because mm. of that act. Mm. Um, and so it can't be something that, um, an evolutionary instinct that's born in me. Yeah, yeah. Because it doesn't, doesn't help me survive. Well, um, they also say that it's, it's from, uh, in, in The Selfish Gene by, by Richard Dawkins, he talks about um, compassion. And he says that humans have a natural em empathy because when we view one another, we see ourselves within that person. Um, this is also how people got away with things like uh, slavery and whatnot, because you could dehumanize another another being. In the 21st century, I hate, I absolutely hate the argument of like, it's 2016, why are we still arguing about that? It's like, it doesn't matter what year it is, it's an argument. But anyway, point is, uh, he would say that empathy is the reflection of ourselves back onto us. So when we, when we donate to Nepal and all that, um, what we're doing is we're seeing this as human suffering. And we can understand suffering, we've, we've suffered. But at the same time, we can also feel empathy for, say, a rape survivor, if we haven't been raped ourselves. Um, so it's a human empathic trait. Uh, where that stems from certainly wouldn't be survival of the fittest, but it would be seen as something of human nature. And um, in a way would be... Um, so for instance, humans, humans eat so much sugar because we don't know how much sugar our body's supposed to actually have. Yeah. And so we ingest it, ingest it, ingest it because our body doesn't have a limit for our sucrose because yeah. um, we're not really used to it. So when we look at saving people in Nepal and, and doing things like that, it's a, an attempt or rather a, a sort of error in our thinking that this person will... So for instance, when I give somebody money, I'm not actually consciously thinking they'll repay me one day, but our society being based on Christian morality would encourage us to give to others because one day God's going to give something back to us. So in a way, it is still an evolutionary standpoint of God giving a reward for doing certain moral acts. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, I could probably agree with that. that um, that's, a, that's a standpoint which... So the only way to make sense of that is by acknowledging that God exists. Yes. Yeah. Um, so if if the, it seems that this kind of compassion, mm. it doesn't make sense that we've got that through evolution. Mm. It, it would only make sense in light of there being God. Mm. Mm. Um, so yeah, I guess going back to the, the question of how do I respond to um, to suicidal Muslim bombers? Yes. Yes. Um, I think that. Uh, they're, they're, while while it's good that like in in a sense it's good that yeah. they like they're doing what they believe like you have to be an idiot to, to do something that you don't believe yeah, in, I don't, like, to I act don't think in a people way. jokingly join us <laughs> yeah it'll yeah. be a laugh and a trip yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. right um, but I think that they're extremely misguided in what they believe they're they're, mm. they're choosing to believe in something which they haven't looked into they haven't tested mm. um, which they've. Um, a lot of them have sort of been brainwashed into believing. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it goes against what we naturally feel as, as human beings. Mm, mm. Um, so, I'll, I'll move, I think that that's sufficient. Um, but if your child was of another faith, 
how would you deal with this? So not an atheist, but rather your child was like... Um, Buddhist or something. A Buddhist or a Hindu or a Luciferian or something, you know. Okay. Probably not Luciferian, but, you know. <laughs> Dad, I, I like that Satan guy. He's, he's good. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, um, if they if they were something like that, Jainism, etc., etc., um, how would you respond to that as, as a Christian parent? Um, so, I... I think that um, Jesus and the Christian faith and God, I think Christianity is, is all about, like I've said before, mm. um, God God helping us to find life to the full in a relationship with Him. Yeah. And I think outside of that relationship with Him, we're not going to be finding life to the full. Mm. Uh, we might find certain aspects, mm. uh, but mm. we're never going to get the, the full picture. Um, and so my first response would be, uh, uh, my heart would go out to my kids. Someone yeah. is so close to me. Um, missing out on what God has to offer, and yes. like, like that's the driving force for all my kind of um, sharing of my faith. Yeah, of course. Um, because I, I, I think that what I have is is life to the full. How could I not show that to others? Like I would have to hate someone. Mm. It's it's like I I have I, I found where you, like you can go to this certain place and you can get a million dollars, but I don't want to tell anyone. Yeah, yeah. Like you must freaking be so dog. Mm. Um, so if my child was of another faith, mm. um, I'd be super upset for them. Mm. Um, I'd want to share with them, but like this, Christianity is not something you can force on someone. I can't, you can't yeah. choose that to them. And so, um, I think I'd, I'd spend the rest of my life um, trying to um, trying to love them in the best way can they that I can. Um, whether it's by in, in some ways, I think that might be supporting them in what they believe. Like sure, if sure. they if they truly felt convicted that. Um, that the that they were Jewish or something, or they mm. wanted to go to some particular temple. Yeah, um, I might even drive them there to mm. show them support. Um, Tell them about the the reality of being circumcised and all. That. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> might deter them a little bit. It'd be fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'd hope my response is is the same response um, with with anyone who's not a Christian that um, sure. I want to share with them and, and help them and and help help them to see. Um, who God really is, and I can only I can't do that by yelling at them or being mean yeah, to them or hurting yeah, them. That, of course. That's misrepresenting who God is. So. Yes. No, that's that's a great answer. Um, so, if commanded by Yahweh to do as Abraham did, would you do so? To kill his son? Yeah, we'll aim for kill his son. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, if commanded to. Um. So short answer: yes. Okay. Mm. Um, but I think it's a lot more complicated than that. Of course. Um, I, I think oh, I'd have to be extremely convinced <laughs> yes, yes. that that was actually what um, God wanted in the same way um, in the same way that Abraham had faith that like he, he realized what God wanted and he had, he had trust that, um, that doing that was going to turn out for the best. Mm. Um, I'd like to have faith, but to be convinced of that, I think it would take a lot more than me just having some a, a dream where I thought God said, "Go and do this." Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that we all have the responsibility of doing everything we can to ensure that we know what God's really saying. Mm. And so, some of the ways in which some of the safeguards, even that we have to make sure that um, we're we're not misrepresenting Him, is are things like the Bible? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, what what other Christians say? Like mm. the Baptists, we've got um, pastors and, and friends and it's like the um, just a whole bunch of different leaders. Sure, sure. And so, if if I felt that I had a dream mm. that God was telling me to do this, well, I'd look to the Bible and say, well, is this something that upholds with God's values that yes, I, I yes. see in His Word? And I'd say, well. Probably not. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, it seems that God God has a huge value for human life. Mm, especially um, children. Especially children. Um, and I'd probably go to my, my friends mm. and they'd be like, dude, what the hell? Why would you want <laughs> yeah, to do that? exactly. Right? And I'd go to my, my leaders and I'd, they'd say, look, that really can't be what God wants you to do. Yeah. Um, I'd say, okay, it's probably not what God wants you to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, that's great. Um, since we've, we've reached our hour mark, uh, again, thanks for doing this, mate. This is... It's great to be able to, to talk honestly with, with uh, Christians and, and sort of get responses to these questions I've received uh, from an honest point, not just, this is what William Lane Craig says. And, and yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, at the end of these, I, I like to ask if you want to plug anything, 
Um, if there's any advice or it can really be anything, a book, a video, a YouTube channel, um, or just some advice that helped you. Um, yeah. 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 Um, my biggest advice would be, um, if you're seriously open to, mm. to thinking about this stuff, to f figuring out what it, what is actually true. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I just really encourage you to keep maintaining relationships with people with different views of you, which mm. is something that I, I try try to do. Excellent. Um, in terms of books, I just did an assessment, um, and in my assessment, I um, was looking at a whole heap of similar kind of questions as this. Oh, like, wonderful. What, how, how is there? How do we justify a holy war? How does that work? Mm, mm. Like just uh, uh, slavery. Like a lot of these questions come out of. Um, stuff in the Old Testament. They and, do indeed. And my lecturer has written um, a, an Old Testament ethics book, um, which is called At Home in a Strange Land. Ah, yes, yes. Um, by Andrew Sloan. And I, I thought it was, I thought it's just really well written, um, a, a great thing to be thinking on. Um, so I totally encourage you, um, along with um, keeping connected with people who think differently mm. um, and keeping the conversation going, mm. to um, look into that book because it's a good one. Yeah, it's uh, all my, uh, one of my favorites on my, on my bookshelf right now, actually. Um, so at the end, I, I usually plug something from an atheistic experience uh, that some of my, either my atheist Bible study have given me or something I received from the Chans or Reddit or something. Um, so one that I've been looking at currently is to have a wee look at, uh, give me one second thewisesloth.com um, So the guy is actually a really, really gentle soul, really great sort of person. Um, thewisesloth.com It's essentially a, the story of a guy who went to seminary, uh, lost his faith, but he talks from a purely scholastic point. So when we actually read his, his works and, and all that, um, it's all from a scholar's point of view. Might not be that helpful if you're, say, somebody... Well, it might not help if you're, you're part of the Atheist Bible Study. But um, if you're a scholar that wants to sort of test that muscle of faith, um, jump on thewisesloth.com and just have a look at what they've written. It's, it's compelling stuff and sometimes very, very difficult uh, to deal with. Mm. Anyway, thanks again, Dan, for being here. Um, and we'll catch you next time on Mind of Theist.